Well hello and welcome to the Force Friday show where we discuss all things Star Wars. Joining me as ever to discuss all these various topics we've got this week is Stephen and the headline of this Force Friday show Stephen is all about Kevin Smith travelling over to England as he says, also Pinewood Studios, yep. to visit the set of episode 9 uh, and also J.J. Abrams' uh, fantastic directing that he says it's one of, he says he's a, a incredible director and he was yep. really taken aback, he's a proper director. Uh, but he says he wept on the set, Stephen, at a performance that he'd yeah. seen, uh, which has got a whole host of speculation, uh, speculative juices running all over the place. Who could this be? Who could be the actor or actress yeah. who has reduced him to reduced tears? Him to yeah. tears yeah. Yeah. One person we know it definitely isn't, or he could be doing his elaborate double buffing again, is Mark Hamill, because yeah. he has come out very recently as well and says that he is yet to join the production and the set of episode 9. He's flying out to Prague, I believe, and he's getting a script sent out to him, uh, but we'll get into that later on in the show because yeah. that's a whole other topic. But who the hell do you think, Stephen? This could uh, be. Well, who could be the guy. I, I think um, we've kind of done. A, we've went through the list, and um, he, he did say that someone that's worked on Star Wars previously. Yeah. Um, so it's not one I can, no, definitely not. No, <laughs> it's definitely not Richard E. Grant either. That's true. Um, my conclusions is it's Adam Driver. He's going to have a big part to play in this film. Obviously, you know. Um, mm. Whether he gets redeemed or not is the big question, or whether he just um, you know dies a um, <laughs> I don't want to say a, 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 a pauper's death. Yeah, pauper's he gets, day, gets yeah. buried in a pauper's grave on your queue. Yeah, or not. yeah. No, I think it is Adam Driver. To yeah. to be honest with you, I think um, he he's going to have a prominent role in this film. Um, he's going to. I think the, the most emotionally charged scenes are going to involve him and Ray, but um, I I think it's going to be Adam Driver. Um, you know, it's coming from Kevin Smith, who's a massive Star Wars fan. He was on the set of the the Force Awakens as well, and I think he yeah. wept on the set there as well. He's a very emotional guy when it comes to Star Wars. As a, aren't we all? Yeah, aren't we yeah, all? I get very that. emotional as well. I remember watching those trailers for uh, the Force Awakens and yeah, well, some, the best ones, yeah. some of the things in those trailers were actually better than the film itself, yeah. just the use of the music. Yeah, but um. Who could it be? I mean, I kind of agree with you, Stephen. I think it could be Adam Driver. I think he's the most accomplished actor yeah, on the set, out with the likes of Richard E. Grant. But of course, Richard E. Grant hasn't worked on a Star Wars film exactly, previously, yeah. so that rules him out. So you're looking through who's the most accomplished actor on set. I mean, it's probably a toss up between Oscar Isaac and Adam Driver. And I mean, Poe, has he got enough meat on his bones? Uh, no, he was I, supposed to die in The Force Awakens, Stephen, as we know, and then he get it fleshed Poe's out. A, Poe's a good character, John, but he is. He is, he's very two dimensional. Um, yeah, he's not someone that's going to reduce you to tears because of exactly, performance. You know. He's a very good actor, Oscar Isaac. He's been, he's been in a whole host of incredible films, I think, inside the Llewellyn Davis. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. He's playing a folk singer. Mm-hmm. That was a brilliant performance. He's done a whole host of things, a whole host of different genres. Obviously, he was in X Men. Uh, Apocalypse, yeah, yeah. Playing a antagonistic figure, yeah. and also Poe, Damon. But Poe, to me, I think you will take a leading uh, role in the re- the resistance or maybe the yeah. rebellion, whatever they're calling it these I think, days. I think this case, John Oscar Isaac, as an actor, yes, he can. He's, really, he's capable. He's, he's of capable. Yeah, yeah. The character, on the other hand, is, no. isn't. Um, he's very two dimensional, no. as I said. He's very much Han esque. You know, he's yeah. he's straight down the line type of guy. Yeah. Whereas um, you've got that conflict with Kylo Ren, mm-hmm. Ben Solo. Um, conflict within him, the yeah. conflict with perhaps his mother, you don't know what's happening with Princess yeah. Leia, yeah. or General Leia, yeah. um, we don't know whether she's going to maybe die in this film, we don't know what this rotoscoping technique, uh, obviously using the archive yeah. footage, how they're going to implement this, how this is going to affect the uh, dynamics between yeah. that relationship, because we've seen it in The Last Jedi of course, where he had the chance to shoot upon her, and obviously kill her in the Admiral Ipa, yeah. <laughs> who yeah. and would never get a, a any recognition for dying which yeah. rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way not me but I didn't care about squids it's nice to see Kevin Smith was <laughs> already <laughs> talking about this uh, this early on yeah. we're a year away as yeah. he says in this uh, this clip I think it was on some daytime show it was, it was on a- ABC News ABC yeah. News there you are and it was, he's such an interesting guy he's mm-hmm. speaking about his heart attack um, how his relationship with his wife has um, changed I think for the better yeah. in, in his words um, just also, to see him lose having lost so much weight yeah, he's a yeah. brilliant guy I love Kevin Smith uh, just yeah. his commentary on comic book geekdom and just films in general he's a fantastic guy really articulate uh, the joints over the years haven't uh, dulled his senses and no. he's about that much he's just an incredible director as well he does underplays his ability as a director and I cannot wait to see that Jane Silent Bob remake next year yeah. uh, but I definitely think it's probably Adam Driver I can't see them 
I mean, it could be Daisy Ridley, but I don't think she's that accomplished an actress. I think she, she was a little bit wooden in The Last Jedi. And maybe she's up to a game in this. Maybe they're doing something where it could be linking into her parentage. She may yeah. have some connection to yeah. some past figure and how that may, it may even be Sidious and how that's going to affect her. It may shake her up in a way where it could reduce you to tears. Yeah. It could be John B. Yeager's Finn. Maybe he finally has allowed to sacrifice himself or do something noble and he doesn't have Rose throwing herself in front of him. <laughs> completely ruining his arc and the yep. potential massive impact he could have had in saving the resistance but I think if I, if I was a betting man and I'm a betting man I would go with Adam Driver's yeah. table reign because there's so much conflict yeah. within that guy so much still to be resolved I think he's still conflicted even now after yeah. uh, killing his dad also killing Snoke I think there's still a chance they could redeem him and I really do hope they do because he's a final skywalker on percentages John what would you give it to be Adam Driver I would give it a good 70-75% yeah, I would go higher now. I would yeah. say 90% if Mark if, Hamill hadn't opened his mouth but um, it could be double bluffing as you said yeah well, we'll actually move straight on to that one yeah. Stephen Mark Hamill uh, as I did say I touched upon it briefly uh, but he has not came on to the set of episode 9 he was actually doing an interview I don't know who it was for I think it was Entertainment Weekly he had a little chat with them and he went into just the intricacies of uh, the, the plots and stuff like that, keeping it under wraps. Obviously, back in his day with the original Star Wars, he was giving it to everyone in the uh, his That's aunt, right, yeah. you know, yeah. just handing it over to, I think he says Meredith or something like that, giving it out willy nilly. What do you think of this? Now it's a much more uh, serious business. Oh, he says yeah. it's like a deep organisation, government organisation, almost CIA like in the secrecy. They're putting the set or the plot and the script on dark red paper so it's really difficult to read uh, he does go on to say that he was allowed to keep the set for the last Jedi uh, keep saying the set the, the plot for the last yeah. Jedi you got to take that home with him don't know if this is going to happen now but the big thing I take from this is that Mark Hamill is not yet went onto the set of episode 9 so we're now mm-hmm. in December this film's been shooting it's for a good 5-6 yeah. months so yeah. that concerns me a little bit yeah. there's still time to go well, I mean, it will listen, continue John, shooting into early next year, but that's minimising the size of his role, I think. The thought crossed my mind the minute you read this article mm-hmm. out to me in regards to Mark Hamill's involvement in the film, um, because you're talking, um, you spend a lot of time on pre-production yeah. as well, yeah. um, so it's quite concerning <laughs> yeah. as, as a Luke Skywalker fan that he might not have a bigger role as we Yeah, hope, maybe the Ben know. Kenobi force goes sitting yeah. on the log and they give a yeah. sort of thing. He has a brief little chat with Ray and then disappears into a whiff of there. Hope yeah. not. Uh, but look, it's very interesting seeing what he's got to say about just the changes in the business over the last yeah. 40 years. Uh, the changes of secrecy and how they handle this. The evolution of Star Wars itself from a goofy little space opera film in the 19, uh, late 1970s, uh, which not a lot of people held out much hope for and much optimism for, that walking talking dog with no pants on and obviously <laughs> a little space farm kid who was whiny and going on about we don't have to sit here and take that and appalise Silas and stuff like that yeah. to now get into what it is now a multi-million dollar multi-billion dollar franchise yeah, certainly and is, just yeah. the change in that is absolutely astonishing really I'm concerned though about Mark Hamill and the size of his role in episode 9 I wanted to see him really taking a hands on approach with Ray training perhaps a new batch of Jedi yeah. that may help take on Kylo Ren and if it's rumoured the, the Knights of Ren if it's correctly rumoured if they make an appearance maybe taking them on because we've seen that Force Ghosts can manipulate uh, the physical surroundings yes. with Yoda and uh, The Last Jedi with that lightning strike on the tree albeit that was a Force uh, sort of a shrine uh, it was very powerful from the Force and you could harness it yet to see whether yeah. that can I think, I it think it's going to be in between John I think mm-hmm. um if if Carrie Fisher hadn't passed away, um, this was going to be her movie. I think that was absolutely. I think yeah. Kathleen Kennedy confirmed that. Um, but I think um, if she if she'd lived, um, it was going to be her movie with mm-hmm. Luke perhaps doing the the Ben Kenobi from yeah. Return of the Jedi appearance, maybe in it for two or three minutes. I think it's going to be a little bit longer than that. But listen, we're big Luke Skywalker fans. We can't absolutely. get enough of the character. But I think it's going to be somewhere in between. Um, those three minutes that Ben Kenobi had in Return of the Jedi and perhaps um, I don't think he's going to have a, a prominent role in it um, this, they've always said this about the original cast that they're always going to be secondary characters in this trilogy and whether you like it or not that's just the way it is it was always going to be a focus on the Ray character um, Poe character and obviously Finn uh, as, lo- you know, as well as Ben Kenobi uh, sorry Ben Solo that is mm-hmm. Um, Kylo Ren and um, I accepted that very early on when they announced this 
Well, see, the thing is, Stephen, you can't... Uh, I mean, I kind of a contradict with myself here, but you can get too caught up in maybe the, the shooting schedules because yeah. as we did speak about in a previous Horse Friday show, Dominic Monaghan mm-hmm. talking about his interactions with JJ, how they fleshed his character out. He had a look at the script, didn't have a big role, and JJ said to him, don't worry about that too much, we're going to make some changes. There was some changes to schedule, and I think Adam yeah. Driver was having to come and cancel university appearances to go back and shoot. That's right, yeah. They were fleshing it out, so it's perhaps that they may just they, they might be shooting this sequentially. They've just shot the first act, maybe the second act, and Mark Hamill's coming over to have a bigger impact in the middle of the final part of the film. Yeah. And as we've already seen in classic films, Science of the Lambs, with what Anthony Hopkins did with, I think it was 10 minutes, 9 minutes of screen time, you don't need to have an hour of screen time to make an impact a, I think Vader had impact. the same in A New Hope John exactly well. he didn't. Yeah. it was just the sheer presence of a man yeah. he was a foreboding figure throughout that yeah. whole film but he didn't dominate the screen time by any means yeah. but I think we're going to move on Stephen because I don't yes. think we've got much more to add to that the next one is all about a potential title and a brief little behind the scenes glimpse from a certain John Biega mm-hmm. he shared I think it was a shot on his Instagram okay. of yeah. him standing in the middle of a quite a large looking set with blue screen behind them not green yeah. screen which got a lot of people yeah. questioning why the hell Old is it school, blue yeah. why is it not green yeah. these people don't know their film history because yeah. it used to be blue screen that's right. and then they changed it because of this why we, that's why we got a black R2-D2 in space it is yeah, yeah. because it couldn't key it in right because yeah. it was clashing so they changed it to the uh, yeah. also the chroma green but he's standing in the middle of this set he's spinning around and they're saying that it's potentially a hologram that he's uh, maybe portraying in this scene right, we don't know because yeah. they've turned down the, the sound so or he's yeah. completely muted the sound so we don't get to hear the dialogue but they're, they're saying that it's perhaps him in a hologram situation so that'll be very intriguing to see how that plays into the story more importantly though what the hell do you make of this potential title it's coming from a supposed reliable source on Reddit I never knew there was I such a thing it. as reliable on Reddit I this absolutely new, hate it son, hate son it. of darkness yeah. Stephen immediately springs up uh, imagery of Ozzy Osbourne perhaps biting off the head of a womp rat yeah. which of course was Bullseye back in his tea whatever the hell it was I think Christopher Lee is right as well <laughs> just horrendous horrendous I hope that's not the title it's yeah. such a, um, a negative title as well for the final film in the Skywalker saga as well John. yes I think darkness, we, we need yeah. some hope mm. you know uh, the, you know the one that's sort of getting Banded about just now that I do like as a new order. It's very simple. It's yeah. very predictable. I know, but so is the end game t- title for the Avengers film. It's ambiguous as well that new order because yeah. it could mean a new order of the Republic or a new order of the First Order. Yeah. They may leave it in a dark note and then go on into another trilogy. You just yeah. don't know what the plans yeah, are with Disney just now. Um, I hope they've been that one. But Son that. of Darkness, Jesus Christ, that is absolutely terrible, terrible. But it is getting mixed response on Twitter. There's a lot of people saying they love it. It's the best one in the current sequel trilogy. They hated the original, mm. or the, the first two titles. They love this one. Other people are sharing and echoing their sentiments that it's terrible. Uh, Funnily enough, John, I, I don't like the title The Force Awakens, but I love the film. and yeah. I love the, the title of uh, The Last Jedi, Jedi, but I'm not too keen on the film. Well, there you so, go. You yeah. can't read in too much to the no. title, but they're saying that it could be a kind of a double entendre set up, or it could be playing into Kylo Ren because obviously Supreme Leader Snoke uh, mentioned that in a brief little thing um, yeah. he could sense um, can't remember the exact line but now he senses nothing he's basically went full to the dark and he calls him Son of Darkness but then of course Luke Skywalker is the Son of Darth Vader the original Son of Darkness so could be a double entendre playing on both of those figures and maybe the importance they're going to have in this film going forward yeah. I don't know but one thing that's got me really excited even if JJ uh, has chosen that title was just to Get back briefly to that first topic, Stephen. We never touched upon it. Kevin Smith talking about the scale of the sets yeah. and just what JJ's doing. He's creating or directing a small country. So, one yeah. thing's for sure, but we're going to get a good film here. I'm absolutely confident that JJ's going to close this out in a high note. This is a guy who's traditionally set up new franchises, rejuvenated maybe lagging franchises like Mission Impossible. He's never really closed it out, so this is him yeah. get the perfect opportunity we're a, to we're finish a, what he started. We're a fickle bunch, aren't we, our Star yeah. Wars uh, fans? Where yeah. um, this time last year, I just you know uh, under this time last year, um, we were walking out the the you know the theaters after the Last Jedi thing, mm-hmm. and we're finished with Star Wars, and <laughs> not as in general, but just well, in general, I can't say that, Steve, because if you go into the movie burner uh, entertainment website yeah. and read my review, 
We also did the, the podcast as well, as you recall. Yeah, I, think we were, coming out. I think we were, uh, our heads were all over the place when we were doing that podcast. Well, look, Stephen, I didn't hate that no, actually. No. I thought there was elements in there yeah. that were stunning. The visuals, I think it's the most visually stunning Star Wars film to date. I thought the sense of scale that he managed to imbue the film with for Ryan Johnson. That shot of uh, also the Admiral Holdo uh, jumped the high, uh, hyperspace through the, the big mass of ship. I can't remember it just now. I think it's a supremacy, but I don't want to yeah. get too... Sure on this but, but that was a, stunning but as a fandom I think that the majority of people are coming round again because they know that this thing's going to be uh, gathering some pace yeah. uh, uh, in the new year there is talk about a trailer coming out before the end of the year I doubt that very much now um, I think I the first one's going to be very early on in maybe January or so fingers crossed because I think um, that would be a good start to the year you know a good start to the build up um, and I'm just looking forward to seeing this concluding part now I really do want to see where they're going to take it because it's a big um, it's a tall order for J.J. Abrams to really wrap things up he's not just wrapping up this trilogy mm-hmm. he's wrapping up the saga yeah and that's it's going to be hugely yeah. important the way they do this yeah. it'll shape what's going to come in the next phase of Star Wars yeah, films going forward yeah. the Benoff and Wise films and also Ryan Johnson but it's an exciting time uh, for to be a Star Wars fan with this whole new three into TV and Disney Plus and just how that's going to amalgamate with the, the films it's very exciting but I'm going to move on Stephen to the final yeah, topic okay. I believe it's the final topic I don't want to be too sure but it's all about of course Star Wars and Galaxy of Adventures we were actually meant to talk about this last week Stephen but for some inexplicable reason we forgot to put it in yeah. we, just we, watched right over. Well, we watched every yeah. episode uh, it's a new little short animated series of uh, cartoon adventures that's been posted up on uh, I believe Disney Kids on YouTube and it's also very kid centric but it gives you an intriguing little uh, different perspective into maybe some of the more famous characters of the original trilogy. We've seen the likes of Vader yeah. popping up in that Rogue One corridor yeah. from a different angle. There's a couple of things happening in there which we know are not canon, Stephen. He's doing things yeah. that never happened before. And that's something that crosses over into all these shots. But they're very interesting little uh, sketches, basically. Cartoon little, uh, cartoon little sketches. Uh, I've really enjoyed that one that's come out uh, more recently with uh, Vader, uh, Luke and uh, also the Emperor in the famous throne room scene yeah, and the way it well goes done. back and flashes back to him um, obviously from the Phantom Menace through the, yeah, his rise, the, yeah. the prequel trilogy yeah. and he's going on about um, I will build a new galactic empire yeah. and, and then it shows you him in the phone, throne room so that was amazing showing that progression through one short little scene and we've seen a couple of other ones uh, different perspective to uh, R2-D2 and C3PO on the Tant of Four yeah Princess Leia putting the plans into R2 we see Vader walking across the corridor from a side shot so that is it's doing cool little things it's flipping up the perspective yeah, but Luke looks like an absolute goon in these Stephen <laughs> it's almost like that robot I can't remember robot or something the one where they do the sketch and they change up the voices and he's talking about getting chased upside of mountain with grey things and freezing oh, right, and yeah, stuff so yeah. He's got that goofiness to him. He's yeah. sitting like a goon. Ginger hair as well. He has got ginger hair. It's very strange. Yeah. Um. I, firstly, I, I I thought the the animation was top notch. You know, I thought that I, that'd be quite an interesting style to do for a Star Wars uh, animated series. Yeah, it would. Um, well, it's kind of a similar to um, Resistance. Resistance. Yeah, yeah it's kind very of similar. Yeah. Um. The other thing um that struck me was um the the voice work on these um clips as well. Um, there was a point where I was thinking they were just taking audio f- straight from the, the film but yeah. when you saw these other um, interesting perspectives yeah. uh, and uh, sort of side stories uh, the Han and Chewie one for mm-hmm. instance getting chased with the Star Destroyers um, you soon realise that it's um, you know, actors that have come in Yeah it's very subtle but you can definitely tell I mean I could tell that wasn't the Han obviously but yeah. he's talking about um, Escaping the uh, cruisers and not I mean, just it, the, it could be a blend of both because yeah, it could be. certainly the McDermott stuff was very I think it's spot on. Is, you it, know? is it Jamie Costa? I think the name of the guy who does hand so, or is it in Gruber? Something in Gruber. But there's two Anthony guys. And Gruber, Anthony yeah, and yeah, Gruber. Yeah, it may yeah. be that they've got this guy in because he can nail the mm-hmm. 1970s, 1980s hand so. Yeah. Uh, but look, really enjoyed them. I'm sure you enjoyed them as well. Yeah, we both watched it. We got yeah. something out of it. I don't think they're completely necessary. I don't think it's something we really need to see. No, no, but look, it's not. introducing a very young uh, demographic to yes. Star Wars in a way that's more palatable and they, they can take it in as opposed to watching a two hour film, which is maybe a bit intimidated yeah. and it's intimidating to them. But Certainly for the younger ones, John, you're right. I think, um, I think um, that attention span at certain ages, it's just asking a bit 
too much for kids certainly these days you know they've got such variety now certainly when I was a kid you know I was certainly fixated on Star Wars mm-hmm. because you didn't really have much more no. um, but you're right I think it's a good way to introduce a new generation to watch the original trilogy because yeah, um, yeah it's, it's probably dated in certain ways yeah but it's still the best some of the best storytelling in Star Wars and it's just the nature of Star Wars Stephen, that you are going to get a wide demographic consuming yeah. all these various different things anyway Resistance in many ways is focused more at children. These are clearly focused at younger children. Yeah, in the early days of the Clone Wars, you could have perhaps said focused at children, but then as those series progressed into the later stages, flipped up more and went more towards uh, focusing to uh, teen and then obviously adult fiends. Yeah. As it expanded on, uh, uh, expanded out. Sorry if I can get my tongue out. Rebels as well, uh, very much centered on a more mature audience and. Also, with this new TV show, these live action TV shows we're going to get, they will be focused more uh, to older demographics. So, but just in nature, you're going to get adults consuming this uh, yeah. short little skits as well. And I'm an adult, I'm 29, I'm yeah. up for 30, and I watch them and I get a great deal of enjoyment. Yeah. So, well, despite yeah, them being together, focused yeah. at children, anybody of any age can walk, you know, walk in and watch it and get something out of it. And that's the great thing about Star Wars. There is one more topic, Stephen, and that I missed, and it's all about the so Star Wars story score being disqualified yeah. for the Oscars uh, obviously I'll let you in because I think you've read the article I'm pretty yeah, sure you have I have John yeah. um, it's really just um, they've just missed the timing uh, missed the, the, the deadline of, of yeah. you know submitting uh, the, the score um, I don't know if this was deliberate on Disney's part I think really they just want to forget about the whole solo <laughs> experience if I'm being honest <laughs> with you they're really um, leaving it out you know in the cold um to yeah, just to it's just a freeze and die, you know, and forget about. Um, I would certainly take it in and thought it out because I think it's a, a great, yeah, great film. I think it's it's not one of the best Star Wars films out there, but it's no. certainly um, it's it's better than some of the prequels. I yeah. thought um, the cast was f- was fine. I thought it was great chemistry with them all. Um, that little um, sort of thing with Darth Maul being thrown in there at the end was that yeah. it screamed a little bit desperate to me but I thought it was a nice little sort of throwback to, to the prequels and to one of the better characters from the prequels yeah. um, but in regards to the score John we were talking about this before we came on air um, yeah. it's not a very memorable score to be honest with you the, the, the Adventures of Han was the only one that John Williams did mm-hmm. that was a very good uh, and that was probably the standout for, yeah. sort of a theme from that score I mean there was a couple of little ones in there but I you know, it's such as my apathy to that score in general. I've not really went in and discovered what the actual names of them are. The Jewel of Fates was in there as a, a Fates, little yeah, hint Fates, of it. Yeah. You know? But apart from that, there wasn't any that really stood out to me. Um, certainly, yeah. um, John Williams speaks volumes of the man. His only part of the score is the memorable one. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not really surprised to see that, that it's. I, mean, I think it's definitely deliberate from Disney. There's no way a company of Disney standing in the movie industry doesn't know what the deadlines are yeah. and doesn't get a film submitted in time or a score submitted in time to be eligible. So I definitely think it's uh, deliberate. Whether it is because I want to leave it out in the side and freeze up and maybe get killed by a wonka, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but look, I would bring the film back in if all as well, Stephen, because I thoroughly enjoyed it. I liked what it did with Darth Maul, even what was maybe screaming of desperation. Yeah. I thought if this film would perform better... That would have been one of the more interesting things you could have done with it. Exploring that whole criminal underworld, maybe introducing Boba Fett and uh, the likes of Bosk and all of those amazing uh, bounty hunter characters. Introducing them and how they conflicted in there with the likes of Fan So as he get older and older. I thought that would have been very interesting. I'm not going to see it now though because they have put an end to the standalone films yeah. for the time being. But I'm not surprised to see that they've maybe deliberately left this score out because it wasn't one of the better Star Wars scores yeah. did nothing for me really no. out with the adventures or whatever it was of Han Solo yeah. didn't really do much and that was John Williams so you can't really be putting a score ahead uh, for nomination for an award on the <laughs> basis that one guy didn't do the rest of the score uh, done one theme and yeah. just on the, the, the strength of that it's just not enough no. but look I don't think we've got much more to add to no, that topic sucks. that is going to bring us to the end of this week's Force Friday show we just like to thank you for watching us. If you are enjoying what we're doing here on this channel, then hit the subscribe button, maybe even the notification bell as well. Comment below, because we do like to talk. We don't bite. Uh, and we'll be back next Tuesday with Box Office Chat.